Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I'm just cleaning out the river. <laughs> what river are you cleaning? The Facebook <laughs> live river. It's serious. You have to. You first have to dam it and redirect it around this island and then clean it all out. <laughs> well done. We're ready, Roberto. So, welcome, guys, to this week's Wider Horizons Transformational Gathering. So, this evening we have Juliet Bryant. So, Juliet is a leading figure in the field of health transformation. She has travelled the world seeking out and studying the most effective tools for achieving good health and healing. Juliet has three published books and has written countless articles for magazines, newspapers, and journals, all arising from her extensive research into healthy li living, well-being, and nutrition. So if anyone has any questions during the talk, if you'd like to either pop them in the, the chat for the Zoom guys, and anyone on Facebook Live can just leave a comment on there as well. Um, so just a reminder that we are on a donations basis. So if anyone would be so kind to donate, we will we'll split that with, with Juliet. Um, and you can PayPal to wider8horizons at gmail.com. So I hope you guys enjoy. And over to you, Juliet. Thank you. And thank you guys for all joining me uh, tonight. Really pleased to be here as part of the Wiser, Wider Horizons programme. And we're going to be talking about something that I think is such an important thing, especially at this time of year when the weather is changing. Um, and that's how to support our immune system. You know, we are in a world at the moment where uh, strong immune systems are key with uh, all that is going on um, energetically, emotionally, physically in the world. It's quite a stressful time we're living in and so supporting ourselves I think is a really important thing. So I'm going to be sharing with you some of my research and knowledge and what I do to support myself and my family and my clients and if anyone does have any questions please do put them up. I've already had one question come up which I will definitely answer as we go um, and uh, please do yeah put up anything that you'd like me to cover and I will try and integrate it into uh, the flow of the evening. So when we look at our immune system, it's quite a multi-layered um, thing. And it's not just a very simple thing of you have an immune system and that has to be strong. And if that's not strong, then forget it. Because the immune system works on so many different levels. In fact, the first level of defense when it comes to the immune system is really our gut. Our gut is responsible for about 70% of our immune function. So this is quite a massive thing and we're just starting to hear more and more information coming out about the health of the gut and how the gut affects the mind and our general well-being. So 
this is really a key place to start. Now, when we think of the gut, we think of it down here, don't we? But actually the gut starts right here. It starts in your mouth. And this is such an important area to look at. So many people have bad bacteria in their mouths. They've got maybe root canals, they've got infections, they've got inflammation within their mouths. And this is all linked directly to the gut and to the immune system. So we really need to address the mouth as a first port of call. So you're probably thinking, well, how, how do I address the mouth? You know, I brush my teeth every day, hopefully twice a day. Um, so what else do you need to do? And when we start to look at the mouth, a lot of people use things that are a bit like antibiotics for the mouth. So if you're using something like a, a conventional mouthwash and a conventional toothpaste, then what you're doing is you're probably killing a lot of the good and bad bacteria within your mouth. So why is this bad? Well, it's a bit like uh, the way antibiotics affect your body. So I'm going to explain that briefly because the, the two are so, so linked. If you uh, have an infection in your body, so for example, you've got uh, an ear infection and you have a recurring ear infection. So you get it once, maybe you go to the doctors for that ear infection and they give you antibiotics. And then what happens is uh, the ear infection goes and next time you get a cold or a bit run down, you get another ear infection. And so you go to the doctors again and you get more antibiotics. Has anyone ever had this happen to them where they've had some kind of reoccurring infection and they take antibiotics, but it keeps coming back? Anyone had that? Yeah, I see a few hands coming up. So what is going on with this is that we have a bacterial infection in our body. So we have a growth of bad bacteria. So let's say we have the streptococcus bacteria growing in abundance in our body. Now you take antibiotics and antibiotics work a bit like a napalm bomb. They wipe out everything, good and bad. So next time, so once that's gone, what happens then is it's a bit like a garden and weeds. If you blitz a garden and you clear it of plants and weeds, what's gonna happen? Anyone know? the weeds are gonna come back before the plants. And it's the same with the bad bacteria. The bad bacteria grow much quicker than the good bacteria. So those bad bacteria come up really quickly and there's no army of defense, good bacteria, to stop them. So this is a really important thing to bear in mind when we're looking at our immune system and our health overall, is what is your defense mechanism like? What is your good bacteria army like? Have you wiped them out too many times that they really are struggling and need support? The other thing to think about when we look at the bacterial balance is, you know, so many people say, well, I took acidophilus because I was on, on antibiotics. And that's great that they're doing something, but acidophilus is one strain. So what we're breeding quite often within our beings is these are these monocultures. So, you know, when you see a field of like, let's say rapeseed um, oil crop, it's just one thing. Now, if a bug comes in to wipe that crop out, there'll be nothing else left. But if you've got this beautiful biodiversity going on within your uh, microbiome, within your bacterial balance, so you've got this multifaceted um, approach. So you've got some, let's say, some cacao plants, some uh, chilies growing, some peppers, some um, vanilla. You've got all these different things. If something comes in to wipe out one of them, it doesn't matter because you've still got 990 other crops. Does that make sense to everyone? Great. So this is something really important that we need to look at and address in our health and well-being is getting that balance right of the bacteria. And why I mentioned that with the mouth, and I had to kind of sidetrack to explain it a little bit, is because what happens in our mouth is the same thing. We're killing off everything when we're using those conventional um, mouthwashes that kill all the bacteria. So you're gargling with that and you're killing the good and bad bacteria. But as I mentioned before, up comes the bad bacteria quicker than the good. 
And obviously, if you keep using that same conventional thing, you're just going to keep wiping out all the bad so they won't be able to take hold. But you don't have that defense line in there for all the other things that the bacteria works to stop the good bacteria. Because they help to prevent all the other um, armies of bacteria and everything else coming in. So addressing the mouth is, is really important. What I like to do is do oil pulling. Uh, I don't know if any of you do oil pulling or know about oil pulling. Yeah, a few nods. Oil pulling is where you get coconut oil and you do this. And you do that for 15 to 20 minutes. Sounds like a really long time. Don't start with that because you will never succeed in doing that. Your mouth, your jaw will probably fall off before you do 15 to 20 minutes. But start with a few minutes and build up. What I do in the morning is I have the coconut oil in the bathroom and a spoon in the bathroom so I don't have to go downstairs and get it. And I go in the bathroom, put it into my mouth first thing, go to the toilet, have a bath or shower, all the time doing this. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I spit it out into a cup and take it down and get rid of it in the food waste. Don't ever put it down your sink or you'll block your sink. Really, really important uh, thing. I don't want you saying, Juliet blocked my sinks up. So oil pulling, what it's doing, and it's, it's a really amazing thing. It's been used for thousands of years uh, in the yogic traditions, is the coconut oil, by swishing it, you're pulling out these bacteria, those nano um, uh, bacteria, these plaque forming organisms. You're pulling it out from between the teeth. You're, you're cleaning your whole mouth and you don't want to swallow the coconut oil because obviously it's filled with all these bacteria and nanobacteria and plaque forming organisms. So you want to get them out of your body. And so it's a brilliant way to do it. I like to mix things into my coconut oil to make it even more um, amazing and supportive of my health. So I add in some frankincense essential oil. I add in this stuff, copabaya, um, which is a really amazing essential oil uh, that you can add in, which again is antiviral, antibacterial, um, antimicrobial, antifungal. So it's going to kill off all those things that are growing in your mouth so that you've got this really beautiful, clean space as the first line of defense. So that's a really amazing thing to be doing with that. You can add other things. You can add uh, turmeric powder. You can add charcoal to your coconut oil. Um, I like making my own toothpaste as well. Um, which is a great, a great thing to do. Um, and I put charcoal in it because charcoal is really whitening for your teeth, but also detoxifying, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So getting your mouth in a good state is really important. What they're finding now is that a lot of um, further down the line health conditions like heart problems and things like that can actually be linked to uh, infections in the mouth, chronic infections that maybe happened because you had a root canal and uh, the body can't fight off the infection. So these infections go into the jaw and then into the body at a deeper level. Um, and so killing off infections in the body at this deep level is a really key thing. Um, just like reducing inflammation which we'll talk about in a little bit so getting that mouth in a good space because the cleaner your mouth is the more stuff can come up from your gut to be cleared as well is everyone with me so far great okay wonderful so what we then need to look at we've looked at the mouth which is the first part of the gut we need to actually go into the gut further down the the digestive system and look at that and um, you know as I was mentioning this bacterial balance is so important because the gut is is the way I like to describe it is your gut is kind of the outside of the inside of your body now I know that's a little bit confusing so I'm going to go through that again the gut is actually this whole section here is the outside part it's the protection within your body before anything gets through to the organs so it's that defense line before anything gets absorbed actually into the body. So it's a really important thing for us to look at and address uh, getting that in a good working order. And a lot of people's guts are overrun by, as I said, bad bacteria, by fungal overgrowths, by parasites. And all these things are wiping off the top of our immune system. So they're all taking away from our immune system working properly. Our immune system works in two levels. So what it's doing is you've got your first level, which is working at dealing with food intolerances, uh, parasites, um, bad bacteria, um, all of those kind of surface level 
issues. And then you've got the other part of the immune system, which is the deeper immune system, which is working at fighting off pathogens and cancer cells and that kind of much deeper level work. Now, one of the interesting things is they can't both be working at the same time. So what happens is that if you're eating lots of foods that you're intolerant to, if you've got parasites all the time, if you've got this dysbiosis, this bad bacteria imbalance within the body, then that part of your immune system is always on the go. So it's cranked up too much. And that's where these amazing things come into play. Um, the medicinal mushrooms are amazing immune modulators. So they help to regulate the immune system. So they come in and create balance and order within the immune system. So I like to view them, I'm quite pictorial. So I like to simplify things with nice images and pictures. So the way I view it is it's like the reishi mushroom is a bit like a general in the army and it comes in and it sees all these headless chickens, these white blood cells running around. Um, not knowing what to do it's like trying to figure out where they're meant to attack some are busy with these food intolerances some are trying to deal with the parasites some are just running around going there's too many toxins in my in this body what do i do so uh the reishi mushroom comes in and says okay you guys you need to take a rest and just chill out for a bit you're you're too far too stressed and overworked you guys need to target that you need to target that okay now you now need to switch off and you need to start working so it comes in and creates this order out of chaos um so that's that's my kind of nice pictorial version of of how the medicinal mushrooms are working on a kind of simple level they're regulating their immune modulators so everyone should be having uh, these medicinal mushrooms, I think, uh, all the time. Um, and how you work with them, well, I've got a really nice tea that I've just made here before we came on with uh, lots of amazing stuff. So I've got this great birch polypore, which I got uh, in the woods the other day, and I broke off a section of it already, and I simmered that in hot water for, um, 20 to 30 minutes and I've added other stuff. So I've added some turkey tail mushrooms and we're gonna talk about these things in a minute. And I also added, I've got a little concoction of stuff here. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it. Ooh. So we've got elderberries, we've got marshmallow root, we've got astragalus um, and we've got star anise in there. And I'm gonna to talk to you about all of those in a little bit. So that's, that's the kind of starting block when we come to the immune system, getting the gut healthy. And how do we do that? That's the important thing. How do we actually create that balance within the gut? Well, I'm going to show you a little video now, if technology allows, which is uh, one of my favourite things. I absolutely love making it. It's called Fire Cider. And um, I'm going to show you the video and then I'm going to talk to you about it afterwards. So let me share computer sound. Share. Can everyone see that OK? Yeah? Okay, great. We're gonna make fire cider, which is an amazing immune support. So let me show you how to do it. First, you get a kilner jar, like so. And then we're gonna put these ingredients in. We're gonna start with rosemary, amazing antiviral, antibacterial actions. Sage, again, incredible antibacterial action for the throat, known as the opera singer's tea. So we're gonna put some sage leaves in. Lemons, very alkalizing for the body. In they go. We've got an orange here, high in vitamin C. We've got some garlic cloves. We've got four garlic cloves going in. Garlic, 39 different antibiotic strains within them. Also highly antiviral, so very appropriate thing to have at the moment. Cinnamon, an amazing antibacterial and antiviral uh, properties to that. In they go. Chilies. Chilies have the action of opening up the blood vessels to allow us to get the medicine in to a further proportion. So we're going to put a nice chilli in there. Let's chop that up a little bit like so. We've got an apple high in pectin. Apple 
apples are amazing for the digestive system and for the throat area. So in goes the apple there. We've got some horseradish. Horseradish is great at killing off parasites and wonderful for opening up the sinuses and clearing the airways. So we've got four beautiful chunks of that going in. We've got a knob of ginger and a knob of turmeric. In they go. They have amazing anti-inflammatory properties. We've got a handful of rose hips. Rose hips are a great source of vitamin C. And we've got some lovely hawthorn berries here. Hawthorn berries are wonderful for the heart. We're gonna put some black peppercorns in. Black pepper has something called piperine in, which activates the nutrients in food. So amazing for really opening us up. Some star anise. Uh, again, hugely antiviral and antibacterial. We're gonna put a lovely onion in here. Onions are high in quercetin, and this is a very good antioxidant to support our immune system. So in goes one onion. We've got some reishi mushroom. Again, an amazing immune modulator. So we're going to put some lovely chunks of reishi mushroom in. And some elderberries, highly antiviral and brilliant to protect against the flu. We're going to top all of that off with some apple cider vinegar. Pop this up with apple cider vinegar and we leave this now for six weeks to brew. When this is brewed it will look like this. We strain that out with a muslin and then we drink and enjoy up to a shot a day or 25 mil and this will put hairs on your chest. Cheers! Ooh. Okay! <laughs> A multimedia uh, presentation. That's the first time I've shared a video in Zoom, so um, I'm glad it, it worked. <laughs> so fire cider, as I said, is just, it's a really cool thing to have. Um, as I said in the video, you can have a shot a day. Now you don't just have to drink it neat. Um, you can use it as a salad dressing, mix it with olive oil and some maple syrup really delicious. You can make a, a veggie bolognese sauce with lentils and at the end of it you can pour it over it like a Worcester sauce kind of flavour. It's really beautiful like that. Um, you can mix it with warm water and some honey or some maple syrup if you wanted to and have it like that or you can just have it neat. That's my favourite way to have it just neat but it works so well in all these other uh, forms because what we really need to get back to, and this is something that I really um, love talking to people about, is that food is our medicine, you know, and, and we really need to get back into this approach of food being our medicine uh, instead of it just being something that fills our belly. We have so many incredible plants all around us. You know, nature has provided us with a huge pharmacy on our doorstep. And usually what's amazing is the things that you need to support you the most are literally right on your doorstep. And so we need to start looking with these fresh eyes at the world, at what's around us, at our environment, so we can start working with it as opposed to feeling like we're these separate beings um, and, and, and just eating processed foods and things like that when we can actually go out and forage or grow our own things, grow our own herbs. And even if you don't have a garden, you can still get out in nature and collect things and start to have pots on your windowsill. So you can really get into the energetics of plants and the energetics of the earth that's really here to heal and support us and this is something that I'm so passionate about the the connection with the earth because I've seen so much incredible healing that can go on through that so when it comes to our gut as I said you know getting things like the fire cider in will get rid of the bad bacteria or keep it at bay but you can also have things like garlic so garlic uh, is an amazing natural antibiotic. And what's incredible about garlic is that there are over 39 different antibiotic strains in garlic. But garlic isn't just antibacterial, it's antiviral as well. But what's so remarkable about nature, and this is just such an amazing thing, is that if you took antibiotics, synthetic antibiotics, they don't distinguish between good and bad bacteria. They just wipe it out because they're synthetic. 
But what garlic does, which is so remarkable, is because it's a natural antibiotic, it has the ability to tell the difference between the geometric structure of good and bad bacteria. So then it can target the actual appropriate one. So it targets the bad bacteria as opposed to the good bacteria. So this is what is so remarkable about nature. Nature is designed for it all to work and for us to work with it because we are part of nature. So we are synergistically aligned to it all, which is just, I just think that's such a magic thing. Now, one of the uh, incredible things about garlic is if you get a garlic clove and you crush it and you open it and you leave it in the air for 10 minutes, before you cook with it or do anything, what happens is one of the active components in garlic, one of the strongest active components is called allicin. And the allicin starts to activate when it has exposure to the air, to oxygen. So if you are gonna cook with garlic, crush it first and leave it so it can do this activation. And then that allicin isn't killed in the heating of it. If you just chop it and put it straight in the pan, it doesn't have time for that magic to come out. So you're, you're missing a lot of the, the amazing properties that that garlic actually has to give you. It's in its raw form, it has the most antibiotic properties to it. One of the things I love doing is doing a, a garlic honey recipe and you get a raw local honey where they've looked after their bees. For me, that's something that's really, really important. Someone who's not killing their bees and really looking after them, not smoking them, not you know spraying with them with her, uh, fungicides and things like that but that's doing it as much as they can within the natural beekeeping method and um, so you get your honey you chop up some garlic cloves you leave them to activate for 10 minutes you put them into the honey make sure they're covered and then you leave that for um, a week and you start eating it a spoonful a day and you can eat the the garlic you don't have to if you don't want you can just have the honey because what happens is the garlic releases its medicine into the honey and so it releases this beautiful liquid into the honey. So then you have the amazing properties of the honey, which is antifungal, antimicrobial, antibacterial, uh, antiviral. It's, it's so uh, beneficial when it's in its raw state, honey. Uh, really incredible medicine to have. And then you get all of the medicine of that garlic as well. If you want to take it to the next level, you can make it even funkier. You can add some cinnamon to it. Um, you can add some turmeric, some ginger. Um, I like to add goji berries to it as well because goji berries are an amazing immune support. So you can make this really incredible honey. You have a teaspoon of a day and that's going to be very supportive to your general overall health and well-being. So that's one of my favorites. That's the kids' favorites as well. I can get so much stuff into my children with that honey. I don't give them the bits because they don't like that, but I can just give them the honey part. And I know that they're getting all the other stuff hidden in there and they don't know because they just think they're having a spoonful of honey. Um, it's like a spoonful of sugar help, help makes the medicine go down. Well, in this case, it's a spoonful of honey. So looking at that kind of thing and how you can incorporate that amazing medicine in. So as I said, garlic is great for the gut to keep it in line. Um, things like basil, um, uh, thyme, rosemary, all of those nice pungent herbs are really good supports for um, the gut, for keeping that bad bacteria at bay. And then of course you want to add in some good bacteria so that you're boosting that good bacteria. When it comes to the gut, I kind of think it's a three stage approach. You remove the bad guys, you repair the gut lining and you replace the good bacteria so that you're working in these three stages, but you're doing it all at the same time so that you're getting the gut to be really strong so that it can support the immune system. Because as I said, that's your first line of defense. So that's really the first place you want to be focusing on. I could talk about the gut all day. I'm not going to, I'm going to move on because there's lots of other stuff I want to talk about, but it's really important that you've got that basic starting point so that you can build from there. And for me, you know, the probiotics I like to have, I, I have water kefir that I make. Um, I've just been making ginger beer. I got a ginger plant starter and been making ginger beer with that. And that's amazing because that's a natural probiotic. You can do kombucha. Um, jun is another one. Sauerkraut is a great thing to have um, my three-year-old has sauerkraut he loves sauerkraut he has a little portion of sauerkraut with all his meals and it's his, one of his favorite foods which I'm really happy about because <laughs> that's like that's a win as a parent it's like yes he likes sauerkraut <laughs> um, so 
you know, my other children like the water kefir, so that's great. And you can do so many cool flavors with the water kefir. But as I said, oh, oh there's one thing. This, I found this recently, this product. It's called Restore, and uh, it's magic dirt water. And this is a really good probiotic. Uh, what you do is you just squirt it into the water, and uh, it's adding basically, it's basically purified soil. <laughs> So yeah, you're putting purified dirt into your um, water, but that's really good because you're getting all the bacteria of soil. And this is, this is another thing when it comes to the immune system that we've kind of forgotten. We're meant to be out there and we're meant to be playing with the earth. We're meant to be digging and growing and getting dirty from a young age up. And the reason why this is so important is because there's bacteria in the soil. And one of the things that I really feel strongly about is the fact that our gut and the soil are intrinsically linked and the health of the soil is reflected in the health of our gut. So we need to start looking after the soil and looking after our gut. We need to look at both of these aspects because they are really, really key, but we need to be out touching the earth for many reasons, so that we can get this bacteria going into our body, um, but also because one of the, the next imp most important thing that affects our immune system is stress. That, you know, stress knocks out our immune system really quickly. It knocks out our gut. In fact, it knocks out almost everything. And most of us are living in a world where we're in fight or flight most of the time. Who here feels like they're kind of up here on their stress levels most of the time? Few people few people good to see some of you not <laughs> yeah fluctuates doesn't it it is stress is one of those things that does you know sometimes you're like i'm super chilled out i'm really you know if i've done my qigong and i've been out for my walk and i've done my foraging and i've done my meditation then i feel great but stress can creep over us um, very quickly and what stress does is it knocks out the um the bacterial balance within the gut it knocks out your immune system. It knock, I mean, it does knock out everything. So reducing our stress levels is really, really important. So how do we do that? Well, getting out in nature is one of the most important things. Grounding, getting your feet on the earth. You know, we are electromagnetic beings. We have this electromagnetic frequency. And one of the reasons why people get sick so often is because they are working or living under strip lights they are on concrete all the time and they're on wi-fi and electro electric um uh, devices and uh yes electric devices have their place and they can bring us amazing community and support and information and all this stuff but it has to be in balance with your time in nature your time grounding your time releasing and um uh, what's the word i'm looking for uh, dissipating all of that charge that we build up through the day being on these things getting out getting away from the positive ions that computers release and getting into the negative ion environment of nature and one of the things is when we're in concrete when we're away from the earth when we're not barefoot on the ground it's like we can't plug our battery in so we're running that battery down of life force and the lower that battery gets of life force, then the less energy we have for supporting our health, supporting all the other functions in our body. So that is one of the keys to supporting your immune system is getting out in nature, de-stressing, breathing, breathing into the earth and just realizing that we are these beautiful beings that are part of this earth realizing that we are one with this earth we are not separate beings walking on this planet we are actually intrinsically linked and the more we can do that the more the everyday stresses fall away so it's about that sitting into the earth that sitting into yourself and when you for me anyway when i really connect into my inner wisdom into my body when i listen to my body when i listen to what the earth is telling me that stress falls away very quickly. Have any of you experienced that before? Yeah? Some yeses, some noes. Okay, so if you haven't, get out in nature, sit by a tree, put your back against the tree and just breathe and just feel yourself letting go into the earth. And then send me a message and let me know how it goes when you've done it. <laughs> because it really is a, an amazing support for our health. So, 
as I said, reducing our stress, supporting your adrenals. Your adrenals are the glands in the body that sit on top of the kidneys that deal with stress. They release cortisol and adrenaline into the body. And most of our adrenals are really overworked and they have a direct impact on our immune system. So we want to reduce the cortisol level in our body. We want to reduce that stress hormone. So some of the ways we can do that, well, medicinal mushrooms, again, are an amazing support for reducing that stress on the body. So chaga, reishi, black foods are an amazing support um, for this. Um, where is it? I've got a drink that I make, which is called longevity and this is a mixture of chaga reishi gynostema ashwagandha foti um, this one's got cinnamon coconut sugar vanilla and masala spices and this is like a coffee alternative and you just put half a teaspoon of that into hot water and it's energizes you but it's feeding your adrenals so it's supporting your body to reduce the stress in it and i designed that probably about six years ago now and i've had so much incredible feedback from it with people who come off coffee switch onto that and just feel the benefit of it supporting their body supporting them to feel energized but without that strain and that is such a a key thing is is supporting your adrenal so it can reduce the cortisol in your body another key thing when it comes to reducing that cortisol the stress hormone in your body is vitamin c dun, dun, dun. vitamin c is um we use up vitamin C. The more cortisol we have, the more vitamin C we use. So the more stressed we are, the more vitamin C we need to have going into our bodies. This is a really important part. Vitamin C works in so many different ways to support the immune system. But when it comes to stress, it's specifically working to reduce that cortisol, which is so, so important. So that's why quite often people, um, you know, who have really stressful jobs get sick. Uh, just after they stop working you know they go away on holiday they stop and their body gets sick because their body's like we've got to get rid of all of this toxic cortisol that's in our system there's too much so it gets sick and it gets a cold or a cough or something to release to to detoxify uh, from the stress or from the toxins that build up in your body so vitamin c is really important this is one that i make and it's whole foods I think for me, I like whole foods things as much as possible. So real foods as opposed to synthetic things because your body knows what to do with them so much more. So this has got camu camu, amla, rosehip, acerola cherry and lemon peel. So they're all the top forms of vitamin C um, in natural form so that you put it in water, you can put it in your smoothie. I stick it in our smoothies every morning. I make a smoothie for everyone and that goes in there. My medicinal mushroom mix goes in there. My super green mix goes in there. Um, and I get all that stuff in. So I know the kids are having all of that. I put hemp seeds in. So there's the essential fat in there. Um, so that everyone starts with a really good boost for their body with all of this amazing stuff going in. Um, so yeah, as I said, reducing that stress, really important, getting out in nature, um, doing whatever you need to do to bring that joy and that happiness in, because that's another thing when it comes to our immune system, the happier we are, the less, um, the less our immune system will struggle, the more, the more our immune system will be boosted. There was a study done about hugging and it showed that people who hugged more had a stronger, healthier immune system because it was that it was that release of oxytocin, that release of joy and happiness. When you're in that, that positive state, you're less likely to get sick. When you're in that stress, depressed state, you're more likely to because your body is being run down because you're battling with all of these um, emotions and um, cortisol levels and things like that. Because one of the things to remember, and this is such an important thing, is that we are more than our physical body. We are mental, emotional and spiritual beings. And we have to look at things on all levels. We can look at things on the base level of like, what am I putting in? And that's so important. But we have to look at that deeper level of, am I doing things that brings my soul joy? Am I doing things that are fulfilling me? Because the more we can tune into that, again, the stronger our immune system and our spirit will be. So someone's just said, is coffee bad for health? For some people, yes, and for others, not so much. Um, what I would say with coffee is make sure it's always organic because um, coffee absorbs pesticides at a much greater rate. Um, so it's much more toxic when it's non-organic. 
for certain types of people, coffee is a real no-no. I think coffee should be limited for most people. In the Ayurvedic system of medicine, you have three body types. You have the vata, pitta and kapha. And the vatas are thin and like run on nervous energy all the time. They're like zzz. Uh, the pittas are kind of fire and in the middle. So vatas are usually quite thin. thin. Pittas are like normal frame and uh, kaffas are kind of earthy, grounded, usually a little bit larger framed people. So kaffas sometimes, in according to Ayurvedic medicine, kaffas would have a little bit of coffee because it would help to stimulate them and give them more energy and, and kind of boost their digestive system and boost them up a bit. Whereas if you give coffee to a vata, it's like is just, just the worst thing because they'll be <laughs> bouncing off the walls. They're already too much in that state of, of high energy of, of zzz. So adding coffee to it just makes them too jittery. And pitters can have it occasionally because you don't want too much because it can bring that fire out too much. Does that make sense to everyone? So for me, I cannot touch coffee because I'm already quite a kind of hyper person. I do like to have things that stimulate me like um, cacao, raw chocolate. I love things like that. And I love the, the adrenal support herbs. And I want to feel um, a boost and a buzz and all of that. But I cannot cope with coffee. I just feel like I'm going to have I'm going to die if I have a coffee, even one sip, my heart starts to race and I just can't breathe. So I don't go there. I haven't for about 16 years now. I haven't had any um, caffeine or tea or coffee um, and raw chocolate doesn't have any um, caffeine in it it's got a sister component to caffeine which is theobromine which doesn't do the same spike that caffeine does and drop what theobromine does is it gently lifts and it levels you out so it's still got that little stimulant but not as much as a caffeine stimulant <coughs> someone's just said could you tell about benefits of your chocolate mixed drink please thinking about having it instead of coffee so I've got, well, I've got a few chocolate mixed drinks. Um, this is my newest one, which is really exciting. Look, do you like the rainbow? Um, so this is called Awaken, and this is CBD, medicinal mushrooms, and chocolate. So this is cacao, chicory, coconut milk powder, ashwagandha, reishi, turmeric, chaga, lion's mane, and CBD. Um, so it's a really, real powerhouse. Um, that energizes you. It's got a chocolate flavor to it because it's got the cacao in there. The chicory is really good for the gut because it's a digestive, um, uh, it's a prebiotic. You've got the ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is an Ayurvedic herb which um, uh, is very good to help regulate the hormonal system, regulate the energy, support the adrenals, regulate sleep. Even though it's energizing in the day, it also helps to regulate your sleep. So that's a really amazing thing. Um, it's got the reishi and the chaga, which we talked about. Lion's mane is very good. Another mushroom that helps with nerve damage, also supporting the immune system. All of the medicinal mushrooms have been shown, they've got beta-glucans in, and beta-glucans are incredible for um, killing cancer cells. That This is what they've shown in lots and lots of pharmaceutical clinical trials now, is that these mushrooms, the beta-glucans within these medicinal mushrooms, actually can kill cancer cells. And they've used them along with conventional treatment and separately, and had great results uh, both ways with could, could, with conventional um, treatment, what they're finding is that they reduce the negative effects of the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy, and they support the body then in its its natural healing. So they're amazing things. I could again talk about um, mushrooms all day long. Yeah, you can buy any of the products off my website, which is julietbryant.com. Um, I will post it up in the thingy in a minute. Um, I can't talk and type. I will, I will lose my train of thought. Um, someone said, I heard a while ago they're using lion's mane to help with dementia. Um, yeah, they are. They have been doing trials with lion's mane to help with dementia. And so far, it's looking really positive. Um, so... I think we have to keep looking at these things. One of the things that's so amazing is that um, we've got thousands of years of antidotal evidence on things like reishi mushroom um, and chaga and cordyceps and lion's mane. They've been used by the Chinese for 
thousands of years. The Chinese emperors revered them. Rishi Mushroom was known as the Queen of Immortality. I mean, what a cool name, the Queen of Immortality. And this is a, a Rishi Mushroom from the UK. This is known as an artist bracket because when you get them fresh, this is white and you can draw on them. That's why it's called an artist bracket. So this is uh, very similar to the red Rishi. Uh, which a lot of people know of, which came from China, which can grow in this country as well. Um, but this is, when you compare the chemical composition of the two, they're very similar. And the, the reishi mushroom, um, as I talked about before, it's got these immune modulating polysaccharides in it, and they've got over 130 triterpenoids, which also cannabis has these triterpenoids, which are amazing for the immune system. So uh, a really incredible support. The, the medicinal mushrooms like the reishi have been shown to be anti-inflammatory and, and natural antihistamines, anti-hypertensive, anti-cancer. Um, so really supportive of so many different levels and working to support the adrenals, reducing the cortisol. So just a powerhouse, you know, and someone may asked a question at the very beginning about how can I support my immune system on a small budget? Go out and find the bracket fungus. Little small disclaimer, please always do cross-reference with a book to make sure that you're getting what you think you're getting because there's lots of poisonous mushrooms out there. So that's my little disclaimer in there so that you're all, it's really important to check what you're doing. But on that front, the bracket fungus, so the, the hard woody things like this, I can't eat that, that's really hard. This, you know, you wouldn't want to eat it, it's hard. This really, really hard. These are all hard woody things. And what they do is they grow on the tree. So they're not growing on the ground. They're not like ground mushrooms. So the bracket fungus in this country, there are no poisonous bracket fungus in the UK. So that's a really great place to start knowing that the bracket fungus can't kill you. <laughs> Whereas there are lots of ground mushrooms that potentially can. So you do have to be really careful with the ground mushrooms when you're getting them. But it's, as I said, cross reference. But, you know, if you get turkey tails, uh, light's not very good. Can you guys see that? Okay. Turkey tails are beautiful. They're like soft and velvety, amazing. And what you'll see in nature is that uh, only one mushroom will generally grow on a tree because they have this hierarchy and that's why taking the medicinal mushrooms is really good if you've got something like candida or fungal condition which is knocking your immune system out because what happens is the um uh, as I said, they've got this hierarchy. So they send out a chemical signature when you have them. So let's say you're working with turkey tails. They'll send out a chemical signature through your body to say, oi, this is my patch to all those lesser fungal um, uh, beings. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word for that. So um, yeah, they send out this signature. So they help to get rid of lower fungal conditions like candida. So, you know, these are some of the best things to support your immune system. Someone said, can you name the mushroom again? So there's reishi mushroom, which is R-E-I-S-H-I, -I, lion's mane, which is lion, and then M-A-N-E. There's also, uh, this is birch polypore, um, and chaga is C-H-A-G-A. -A. So these are a few of the mushrooms. In my mushroom mix, I've got reishi, chaga, mataki mushroom, shiitake, agaricus ablasii, turkey tails, and cordyceps. So this is a, a really nice, it's been heat extracted, so you can just put it into smoothies and things like that. Because with these, these mushrooms, you have to extract the medicinal benefits from them. So you have to either do a tincture, um, so you extract it in alcohol, or you extract it in tea, where you heat it so that the goodness comes out in the heating. Um, so in my products, I've got heat extracted mushrooms. So they've already gone through that process. So you can just use them hot or cold. You don't need to worry about that at uh, boiling them uh, or simmering for 15 to 20 minutes. Does that make sense? Is everyone with me? Yeah? Haven't lost anyone yet? Okay, good. Okay, someone's said, can you overdo vitamins? My friend had a sugar-free energy drink, which had 7,000% recommended daily intake of B12. What is the effect of this? So that's a good question. Um, can you overdo it on the vitamins? 
depends what one and it depends in what form to be honest i would always be worried first of all when i see a sugar-free drink my my kind of like uh -uh, alarm bells go off when i see the word sugar-free because generally that means it's a chemical shitstorm. sorry excuse my language but it means it's filled usually not always with other stuff that is chemically based that is not going to be good for your body so we want to avoid that where possible and we want to go down the natural route now you can have naturally sugar-free things where there's no added sugar put into the product and that's great um, you can have stevia uh, being used a uh, stevia is amazing i grow it in my um, greenhouse it's just come in and stevia is a plant that is super sweet the leaves taste so sweet but there's no sugar in it whatsoever so uh, i grind up my stevia leaves and put them in drink mixes because it sweetens it when you've got things like cacao and the mushrooms they can be quite bitter so adding that stevia in is an amazing natural way to sweeten it and they as they have no sugar they don't have the same effect on the blood sugar levels that that um sugars can have my um one of my other favorite sweeteners is natural sweeteners is coconut sugar because that's very low on the gi index and one i'm just going to touch on it really briefly because this is a really big thing for the immune system is sugar um, when we have refined sugar this really has a massive impact on our immune system it can knock our immune system out um, so much so we we want to avoid having refined sugars and there's actually really no need to have refined sugars because there's so many amazing natural sweeteners out there that are much better for your body um, so as I said coconut sugar is great maple syrup you just want hundred percent pure with these things not maple flavored syrup which is actually high fructose corn syrup with maple flavoring in which can very often be the things if you don't read labels really important if you're going to supermarkets and stuff to read labels because things are designed to grab your attention and to make you go oh look that's that thing that's meant to be healthy so you get it and uh, it's actually not so really important to just be aware of that um my aunt once went out and bought some stevia because i'd recommended it to her and i i'm terrible people don't like me coming around to their house because i get something and i turn it over the first thing i do is what's in this and it was a stevia extract that had two percent stevia and the rest of it was actually aspartame uh, which is um a known neurotoxin sweetener which should be avoided at all costs um so she thought she was doing something right but actually it was just clever marketing just like those little bacterial drinks um that say they're really good for your gut but actually it's just really clever advertising and it's mainly just a really sugary yogurt with a small amount of good bacteria in so it's really important to look at labels and start to get savvy and as much as possible have stuff that you're making yourself or you know comes from a good uh, source that is organic someone said did you buy the stevia plant from plant or seed it was a plant there's a great company called herbal haven and herbal haven is super cool and they grow some really funky herbs not just like I mean, basil and rosemary and sage are amazing and i love them and i use them a lot but they have things like ashwagandha and stevia and you know cool things like that so back to the question about the vitamins if you're having vitamins in a natural form um the rda is very low on vitamins because the rda is not the rda for vitamin c is 60 milligrams a day of vitamin c now 60 milligrams a day is going to do nothing to support your health and well-being like literally nothing um you know we want to be taking in the world that we live in today with the toxins and the stresses and all the rest of it we really want to be having you know two to three thousand milligrams of vitamin c a day you know we want to be having that higher end of vitamin c now with something like my vitamin c mix because it's coming from natural plant sources you don't need such a high amount because it's not synthetic so uh one half a teaspoon of this is equivalent to 250 milligrams so having a teaspoon a day is ample because that 500 milligrams is easily absorbed into your body because it comes from the right sources if that makes sense so what i'd say is that question about the vitamins is generally it's like the rda for vitamin d i think is 400 iud a day we should be on 4000 to maintain iud a day to maintain as women 6000 for men to maintain our levels and vitamin d is such an important thing when it comes to the immune system um this is 
probably one of the one of the key nutrients that we need in our body for a healthy immune system and vitamin d is responsible for 900 gene uh, functions within your body so 900 actions in your body require vitamin d and um most of us if you're in the uk are not getting enough vitamin d most of the time so really making sure that we're optimizing this. There was a study done with COVID and uh, vitamin D levels. And I think it was something like in this one study, 96% of the people who had died were vitamin D deficient. So um, this is a huge thing. There's been a lot of studies now linking vitamin D deficiency to flu and things like that. So we want to be optimizing our vitamin D because then our immune system is going to have so much better of a chance at um, keeping strong and vitamin d doesn't have to be expensive you know but it's a really good place to start someone just said just started on 4000 ied thought it was too much so glad you said that brilliant i'm i'm really pleased um what i would recommend is if you are someone who um, doesn't maybe get out in the sun a lot who puts lots of sun cream on um, that you optimize your vitamin D, you do one month at 10,000 IUD and then you drop down to 4,000 if you're a woman, 12,000 IUD if you're a man, drop down to 6,000. You just do one month of high dosing it into your system to really support um, optimum health. Um, and that's, that's a really good, a good thing to, to do. Okay, Whew. Uh, there's so much I wanna talk about. That's why I talk so fast because I'm like, I wanna share all this information. I've got so much. Um, to talk about so um someone's just said how much vitamin d in one banana um i have no idea but i don't think there's so basically vitamin d is um we don't find it in a lot of foods uh vitamin d mainly comes from the sun and the type of vitamin d that we want is d3 and ideally we want d3 with k2 that's the kind of format that we want the vitamin D in because the K2 helps with the absorption of the vitamin D. On my YouTube channel, which is Juliet's Kitchen, I've got um, 21 videos all about different supplements. I did a 21 day thing where each day I did three supplements a day and I do a kind of 10 minute talk on just vitamin D. So all about the levels and stuff. So do check out that video because that would be good to get into the specifics of that. Um, and on there, I, there's a formula that you can use based on weight as to how much you should be giving children. So have a watch of that video um, on my YouTube channel and that will give you the links. You can get to my YouTube channel from my website, which is julietbryant.com. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about a couple more things before we go to some more questions um, because uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot I wanna share about the immune system. Um, so, as I said, vitamin D really, really key, garlic, vitamin C. Um, there's a few other things, like I was mentioning that tea that I, I made, and uh, this has got some amazing support for the winter. So if you've got kids as well, they can have this. Um, I wouldn't give it to children under three, but over three is fine. Astragalus um, is an incredible uh, root. Let me show you guys. Can you see that? Yeah, it's little, so it's, it's hard to show you. But um, astragalus is uh, basically, um, it contains loads of incredible uh, beneficial plant compounds. And what it does is it protects the body against bacteria, germs, viruses. Uh, and there's been evidence showing, studies showing that it um, helps to um, increase the body's production of white blood cells. So astragalus is not something that you would want if you've got an immune an autoimmune condition so this is a really important aspect of the immune system some people have autoimmune conditions uh, like ms which uh, attack the body is attacking itself now you don't want to ramp up the immune system if your body is attacking itself you want to regulate the immune system so the medicinal mushrooms would be amazing for that because they're immune modulators so they're regulating they're not ramping up the immune system um, so if you do have an autoimmune condition things like elderberries things like astragalus are not good um, because you can have them in small amounts but you don't want too much because that you don't want that body boosting the white blood cell production um, 
because of that. One of the things with autoimmune conditions um, that I am seeing and I've witnessed through my life, my mum had multiple sclerosis when I was a child. Um, she got it when I was eight and died when I was 21. And I noticed she kind of went on a really big journey with it where she looked at all aspects. She looked at allopathic medicine, she looked at natural medicine, she looked at energy healing, the whole thing. And one of the things that she came to a conclusion about the MS, um, and, and I've seen this a lot, is the heavy metal, um, the, the amalgam fillings leaking mercury into the body. And what happens with that is then the mercury binds to a cell, attaches to a cell, and then the body sees mercury, it doesn't see the cell, so it starts attacking itself. And there are lots of potential conditions coming out with the amount of heavy metals that are inside people. So detoxifying um, the body from heavy metals is a really important thing. Um, detoxifying the body in general as a support for the immune system is, is a really key strategy that should be looked at as well um, you know adding in things like chlorella um, coriander is an amazing heavy metal detoxifier um, apples actually help to detoxify heavy metals as well um, so adding things in these things like the chlorella the blue green algae the spirulina the liquid zeolites into the body to detoxify these heavy metals because the more your body can be clear the less um, stuff you've got in there that shouldn't be in there, the less refined sugar, refined foods, the, the less um, heavy metals, the less pollutants, the less, you know, um, toxins in skincare and makeup and all of these things, the less of all of that you put into your body, the more your body can naturally do what it wants to do. Because what is remarkable is our bodies are super strong. You know, we are incredible beings. And it comes back to the thing, you know, you go and look at a rose, or uh, a beautiful flower in nature and you see how perfect that is and then how it forms the rose hip you see this majesty in nature this creation and we have that same majesty in us because we are part of that same creation when we allow ourselves and our bodies to do what they naturally want to do they generally will work properly it's just the barrage of stuff um, that is so foreign to us that's in our systems that are really causing all the problems. So, you know, the more we can get back to eating a whole food diet, eating as much organic food as possible, you know, this is a really big, big thing that we need to address and look at, you know, the, the pesticides in foods, all of these toxins slow down your immune system. So the more we can clear out, uh, the more we can clear out anger, the more we can clear out um, that disharmony, that disease within our body, the stronger our immune system will be. So I'm gonna summarize really quickly some of the things I've said, because I know I've talked about quite a lot. So I'm just gonna put it into some bullet points and then I'll ask you guys if you've got any questions and you guys can unmute yourself. So first step, look at your mouth and your gut. Get in things like your fire cider, um, your probiotics, your, your sauerkraut. Start getting those bad bacteria and good bacteria balanced. First step. One other thing I didn't mention, which is really key. Drink good, clean water to help flush out those toxins and keep your body clear. Really, really important for the immune system. Make sure that you're optimizing your vitamin D because as I said, vitamin D is responsible for 900 uh, expressions in your body, 900 activities. So getting your vitamin D optimized, especially as we're going into winter, really important thing to be doing. And as I said, I've got those videos on the supplements on my YouTube, so do check those out. Then adding in the immune supports, the immune modulators, adding in the medicinal mushrooms so that you can pardon me, really support your immune system to be stronger, support your body to be stronger, support all your organs to really give you that grounded strength in your body. Then looking at reducing stress in your body. So getting out into nature, grounding your body, getting away from the screen or balancing your time on the screen and your time in nature so that you're having ideally equal amount. So the, the amount of time you spend on the screen, you have that much time out in nature. That's, that's what we really optimally want. Good sleep. Another key thing, exercise, moving that lymphatic system, because our lymphatic system is a really important part of our uh, immune system and our lymphatic system doesn't have its own circulatory system. So unless we're moving our bodies, unless we're actually uh, a circulating our energy, 
we're getting this stagnant uh, buildup in our bodies and stagnancy leads to disease. You think about a pond and if that pond's stagnant, it gets really icky, doesn't it? Well, we don't want that. We want to be that fresh flowing stream that's got that movement through the body, that movement of fresh, clean energy going through. So movement is really important. And then adding in those things that are going to support your body, like, as I said, the medicinal mushrooms, adding in the vitamin C to reduce the cortisol levels and support the body in health, adding in things like rose hips, which are a great source of vitamin C, the garlic, natural antibiotics so that you're supporting your body. Um, a few of the other things that are really important, I'll just touch on zinc. Zinc is really important for the immune system. Great source of zinc naturally, uh, pumpkin seeds or raw oysters. Um, I personally stick to the pumpkin seeds and the zinc supplements because there's a lot of heavy metals and other stuff in fish. So there's a lot of pollution and overfishing, which is harming the oceans of our world. Um, Having things like your astragalus, your elderberries, amazing studies on elderberries um, with their antiviral nature, stopping, re reducing the length of flus and colds. So really great thing to be having in your toolkit so that you can prepare yourself. Adding in things like CBD, the cannabis um, things, the, the, the different cannabinoids in cannabis have been shown to support the endocannabinoid system. And the endocannabinoid system is a bit like the foundations of the house. So when we add in these endocannabinoids, um, really interestingly, breast milk is one of the richest sources of cannabinoids on the planet. So when a baby's born, they go on the mother's breast and they feed and the breast milk feeds the endocannabinoid system, which, as I said, it underpins the immune system, it underpins the nervous system, it underpins the whole body. So it, as I said, it's the foundation. So you get those foundations strong and everything else will work better as well. Um, you know, the CBD and the other cannabinoids, the cannabis plant has 120 cannabinoids, as well as lots of triterpenoids, all of which support health and well-being. Um, the, the one that is psychoactive, the one cannabinoid is THC, but you don't have to have that in high amounts because all of the other cannabinoids are so amazing. So that is the cannabinoid that is psychoactive. So it makes you feel stoned. The other cannabinoids don't have that feeling. They can make you feel relaxed and calm, but not stoned so um a lot of people worry if they haven't heard of if they've heard of cannabis but they haven't heard about cbd necessarily they worry that they're going to start taking cbd and uh, be taking something illegal or getting stoned or something like that and you won't um so working with those cannabinoids is a really beautiful thing um i've got a really lovely drink mix here which is essential cbd hot chocolate and i've got a turmeric one as well which again has the mushrooms in and the um cbd it's in fact got CBG, CBT, CBA. It's got lots of the cannabinoids in there. So it's a really beautiful, um, complete um, drink. <laughs> can't think of the word there. So those are some of the things that we can do to support the immune system. This is something I could talk about probably all night long, but I won't. Um, it's, it's a lot to take in. So hopefully that has been enjoyable and you've got a lot out of that. So if anyone wants to um, unmute themselves at the end, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the work I do. So if you want to connect with me more, but we'll take some questions first. So if anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask any questions. So if anyone does have any questions, um, including people on the Facebook stream, if you just pop your hand up or pop a little message in the chat and I can unmute you. Oh. oh yeah, go ahead, Patsy. Hi, um, Juliet, thank you. This is so useful. I'm really, um, it's really good just to hear it all. I mean, I, a lot of this I kind of know, but it's just great to hear it from you and your enthusiasm um, and also reaffirming, you know, things. Uh, I've started taking the seven blend mushroom recently and it was interesting what you said about having it in a tincture. Mm. When you buy it as a, as a mushroom powder, should I be heating it or just putting it straight in smoothies? So it depends if that has been heat extracted or not. So for example, my mushroom mix um, has been heat extracted. All the mushrooms have already been heat extracted. So you can just put them in smoothies. So it's important to check that on there as to whether you need to use them as a tea that you heat up. I, 
most powders, not all, but most powders kind of depends on the price point that you pay for the thing. But if it's a higher value mushroom product, then they've been heat extracted. If it's a kind of cheaper one, then they probably haven't. So, um, yeah, I think I got it from like a Whole Foods company or something. But yeah, I'll check that. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to look at your <clears throat> products on your website for sure. There was one other question about water. I, I really struggle with the whole water thing because obviously plastic, I don't want to buy from companies that, that make plastic water bottles. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then when you buy glass, it can become expensive. So um, a cousin of mine had one of those filters, you know, where, where it kind of is slow, but it, I can't remember the name of it now. Berkey? It, it, was it a Berkey? don't know but there's different types i wondered if you could recommend anything julia so there's a few different ones that i really like um there's uh one on my website called wellness water and that is so cool uh that is an incredible uh one the other one that i love i've had my water filter it's a nikken water filter and i've had it for 15 16 years now uh, the same filter system and you change the filters but it's it's brilliant and what it does is it filters it through a few different layers but then after it's filtered it it puts the minerals back in it and this is something really important to look at when you're having water is that the minerals are going back into um, it because we don't want totally clean water because that's not what nature's about nature doesn't have clean water it's got clean water but it's got mineral rich water so um, if you're having distilled water that can be good for a short period of time but you're missing out on that mineral uh, quality that's meant to be in there so adding some raw gray sea salt or some himalayan salt um, or some uh, mineral drops uh, to it is is a good thing to do but definitely i would where possible avoid plastic water bottles find your local spring that is like the best thing to do and free um uh, I, I go and get a spring water. There's a website called findmyspring.co.uk and you can find your local springs and go and check it out. And then I filter spring water because you don't know if there's pesticides or runoffs from the field. But if you've got a good filter, you're filtering it through there. But you're drinking water that is pure and good as opposed to municipal and, you know, um, filled with a lot of stuff you don't want. <laughs> right. Thank you. That's really helpful. No problem. The other thing you can do is you can put stuff into your water. So I've been putting this stuff. This stuff is really cool. It's called Crystal Energy. And um, basically it's like super cool water from amazing sites. And you you put that into the water, just a few drops into all your water and it kind of um, activates and energizes it. So um, you can you can do that, too. So that's quite a nice thing to do. Lovely. Thank you. No problem. Oh, thank you. Can I, can I talk? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can, can you hear me? <laughs> I'm not sure. Can I, I can hear you? Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much for today. And uh, I already buy uh, quite uh, many products of yours. Oh, especially thank you. So I've got all chocolate mix and CBD mix and turmeric mix, love it a lot. But I'm a little bit um, concerned about uh, coconut sugar there because I'm two years after cancer diagnosis. So I could see you put see, um, um, sweetener there, but why coconut sugar as well? Should I avoid coconut sugar or it's okay for me? Just your opinion. So obviously this is, you know, I, I, it's hard to advise too much when, but, but um, so coconut sugar has a GI index of 35. So that means it raises the blood sugar level up to 35. Um, so that what that 35 means is how quickly the sugar interacts with your system. So refined sugars at 95. So uh, beetroots are at 50. Um, so coconut sugar has a very slow release into the system. So um, it is a sugar and you shouldn't have too much, but you have to feel into it as to what feels right for you. But personally, I would say that it is a natural sugar that's not refined. So it's not going to have the same effect as that refined sugar. And because it is low on that GI index, it isn't too strong a sugar. And I guess it's not so much in your drink because it's not no. very sweet. So I think it will be fine for me. Yeah. Will, and will and if, you, if you ever wanted me to make them with just the stevia and without the coconut sugar, I can make them specially, just message me. So oh, really, I, I would like to do it. So a message to your email, is it right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah. excellent. That's what I would like to do. Yes. I make it all myself so I can tailor make anything. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. doing it all 
it's not in a factory made by other people it's done by me so if you need something if for anyone if you needed something specific i can i can do it all oh welcome thank you very much for this a little advertisement i'm following your uh, recipe books as well so wonderful recommend everybody and i try to avoid some maple syrup so yeah also, i still very nice and, so, and good amazing so, thank you thank you very much for this and thank you for thank your answer. thank you yeah, I should mention, I do have these lovely books. So this is Superfoods and How to Use Them. And this is basically, I go through, and I don't know if you can, I can see that. For example, I talk about apples um, and how, why they're good. Well, that's cider vinegar. Um, they're apples, why they're good, the nutritional properties, and then recipe on how to use them. And I go through an A to Z. There's some really normal stuff and there's some weirder stuff. So, you know, I talk about things like cat's claw and kombucha, um, but I also talk about well, walnuts and my really lovely recipe for a healthy chocolate spread. So, uh, I've had really great feedback. There's that and then Divine Desserts uh, is another one and Divine Detox is a seven day detox plan which is an ebook. Um, so those are all there and if uh, anyone does want to do more with me and and look into the stuff I've got a special offer which I've just put into the chat there's a link um, to it. I've got online courses that pre-recorded online courses on hormone health, family health, gut health, uh, self-care, um, how to have a healthy vegan diet. And there are a few others, there are eight of them that normally come to 982 pounds, but in this bundle, you can have eight of them for 150 pounds and you get lifetime access to them. And you get to ask me questions on them. You get videos and handouts and all that kind of jazz. So uh, if anyone's interested, then that is a private link for that special offer uh, for you guys. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, so you mentioned earlier how intolerances can like knacker your immune system. And a year ago, my mum became intolerant to gluten. Yeah. And since then, her immune system has been rubbish. Um, and she's been like trying everything under the sun to try and like boost it back up. But I was just wondering if you had any sort of advice. So first of all, she needs to stop having the gluten. I don't know if she has. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Because um, some people realise they're intolerant and still have it occasionally because they think, well, it's okay. But gluten is one of the ones that we're seeing so much now. It's, it's, it's on the rise. And my feeling with this is it's linked to, well, it's, a few, it's a few fold reasons, but it's linked to um, a glycophate. Glycophate is a weed killer that is sprayed on wheat crops. What they do, um, and they've started doing this, I think it was about four or five years ago, and this is where it really ramped up the amount of <clears throat> gluten intolerances, is when the wheat has reached its maximum yield, they spray the crop with glycophate and which is also Roundup, it's another name for Roundup. So they spray it with the glycophate and then they harvest it. So the glycophate is fresh on the plant because what the glycophate does is it kills the plant at that top yield so that they can harvest it at that maximum yield so they get the most money for it. But the glycophate hasn't had a chance to go anywhere, hasn't had a chance to wash off. Um, and so people I feel are becoming intolerant to gluten because actually what they're intolerant to is the glycophate that is going into their system but they don't know it's glycophate the body goes well I'm eating this thing and I'm I'm this is the reaction because of this they don't they can't distinguish but this is my feelings with it so one of the things if you're not intolerant but you do have wheat I would say make sure that you have uh, organic wheat um, the other reason that people are becoming gluten intolerant is because they've hybridized the grain the grain used to um be really tall with a short head and now it's really short with a massive head so the gluten the gluten molecule has gone from being small to much larger and because it's that much larger it's um scratching our digestive system basically it's too big almost for our digestive system to cope with so um the first thing as your mum's done is stop having it the second thing is repairing the holes that it's caused in the gut so having turmeric aloe coconut oil these things help to repair it i go into a lot of detail in this on my how to heal the gut um course uh four-week course um but 
healing the gut first of all and then adding in things when we have foods for a while that have um, compromised our immune system it takes the immune system time to recover because that gluten for example is in our system for six weeks after we stop having it so it's quite a long time that it stays in your body and we can mistakenly have it in things as well yeah so getting her on the mushrooms getting her on vitamin c um it's that rebuilding of it so uh, all the things we've been talking about today really uh, and i would i would really ramp up the mushrooms so that it's supporting yeah. the body to to heal itself and get through that kind of trauma that it was put in brilliant thank you so much no problem any other questions could i say something of course um i am um, actually reversed my autoimmune um, thyroid disease by taking out gluten and dairy so i had thyroid antibodies and it said on my blood test that i got the disease it, um autoimmune disease but then i gave up gluten and dairy for six weeks and then i've got no antibodies uh, which the medical profession said you couldn't do but i actually did it under dr chatterjee so i've done that so and I, I knew from like googling on the internet that there's something I could do, but the only thing I'm left with is I've still I've got a goiter, okay. And uh, I take um, a greens powder, pro greens powder. I've started doing that, but I wondered if there's any sort of nutritional support that I could bring down. I don't know if you can see, I could, you know, I could bring it down a little bit because I'd hoped that giving up the gluten and dairy, but I've done that for three years. I don't have any gluten or dairy. Would bring um, it down so what i would say is you can add in things what what is your thyroid level like now oh it's it's, it's all okay nothing's abnormal on right. the blood test you just it looks like and that i've never had anything wrong with it if you see what i mean so it's just more to nodular so one of the things i would i would recommend you have is lugol's iodine um uh, this is really good to support the thyroid Okay. And also adding in um, the seaweeds <laughs> is really good to support the thyroid. Um, wild blueberries are, are really good for the thyroid as well. Um, but I would, I would also um, look at having a lot more anti-inflammatories in your body to reduce the inflammation that's in there. Um, so having fresh turmeric on a regular basis, ginger, um, that those things would all be really supported. Um, yeah that that's the kind of base level i would i would recommend looking at okay thank you no problem any other questions uh, i have a question yeah um, so everything that i knew about vitamin d has been flipped on its head because i always thought that vitamin uh, d was in bananas um, but I had a look and it's the magnesium in the bananas that act, helps activate the vitamin D. So now I know this. So obviously it's, it's, there's not much sun about at the moment. So would you recommend having a, um, a supplement for vitamin yeah. D during the winter months? Yeah, definitely. I yeah. would, in this country, so I was one of the people that like years ago, I thought I don't need to take a supplement. Like I love the sun, don't really think it's necessary. And uh, we'd gone over to India. We spent three years in India and I had my blood test, uh, blood test done of all my levels. I wanted to see where I was at. And we'd been there for about a month. I don't wear sunscreen. I personally don't believe in it. I'm careful in the sun, but I don't wear sunscreen. Um, I don't use lots of soap on my skin, which dissolves vitamin D from the sun. So I was doing all these things that um, you know, I felt were, were pretty good, but I'd been in England at this point for a long time um, and I'd been over there for a month. My vitamin D levels from this test came back at 39. Now in India, that was fine. Between 30 and 50 is considered fine as is, an, as, in, as is in Australia, but over here, 50 is the minimum that you're meant to have. Now, what's very interesting is that we should be optimizing our health at 150. Although I read a recent study that says that they've, they've tested people and up, optimized it up to 250 and had incredible results with the immune system um, so more and more studies are coming in with vitamin d as to where we should be but really we should be up at the 150 point um, so i was at 39 and that really shocked me because that's low <laughs> 
um, and I was out in the sun. So I realized that, you know, if you're not out in the sun for months on end, you know, with little, what, what we're meant to have is 30 minutes a day with virtually no clothes on in kind of uh, 11, 12 o'clock sun to be optimizing our vitamin D levels. And what happens is vitamin D, the sun hits your skin, the vitamin D comes up actually on your skin in these little oil droplets. And then it gets reabsorbed over the next 24 to 48 hours into your body. So if you've got these oil droplets on your skin, you've been in the sun, you go and have a shower, you use cream, you know, body wash soap all over your body. What's happening, that soap is dissolving that vitamin D that you've just been out in the sun getting. So you're not going to be absorbing all of that vitamin D that you could be. So having a vitamin D supplement is a good idea. I've got a couple on my website. This is uh, one of them. They're both vegan. Um, this is 2000 IUD per pill and it's D3 with K2. So as I was saying, that's the kind of way that it absorbs best in your body. And I've got a liquid one, um, which is great. It's just a liquid dropper, which is a really good vitamin D as well. Thank you. Do you, no. do you know how they make the vitamin D supplements? So I'm thinking if it's not in food. So, you you can, so the, the vegan ones come from um, lichen, you know, the kind of mossy thing. And the non-vegan ones come from lanolin, so from sheepskin because it's being absorbed and produced there. Mushrooms, um, if you get a reishi mushroom or a medicinal mushroom and you leave it on its white side up in the sun, that is quite a good source of vitamin D as well. But I personally wouldn't rely on it in this country. I would, I would supplement it. And you can get it as well from oily fish, but that's D2. So um, oily fish, if you're eating that, does have vitamin D in it as well. So things like salmon. Um, Thank you. No problem. Hi, can I just ask what yeah. happens if you can't take vitamin D? My mum is 84, she's got hyperparathyroidism diagnosed this year, and a vitamin, she's vitamin D deficient, but when they started giving her vitamin D, it started cranking up the calcium even higher, so they stopped taking that. Um, uh, she's got a calcium of over, like, I think it's about 3.17, uh, it's too high. Um, and they don't give her any more, any vitamin D. Do you know anything about that? Because I'm concerned that immune system's not great, but at the same yeah. time, they can't, they've either got to look at operating um, to, to remove, remove this. Um, it's like a non-cancerous tumour on a parathyroid gland. So it kind of depends on, you know, what medication she's on, because she's, that's, that's the thing, when you start taking medication, it gets more complicated. It, yeah, well, they tried her on Sinacalcet drug, and she had an allergic reaction to it, and started swelling, so she's not on any medication. They tried okay. her on a, a drip to bring down the calcium. Again, she reacted to it, and they, they're not, she's not on any medication, so they're, they're basically looking at either doing nothing or doing an operation, but she's 84, you see. And she's been gone, like confused, and her mobility's declined since the calcium. I didn't realize that calcium could cause so much problems. So, know. what I personally would do, and obviously, I haven't consulted with your mum, so I don't know her case history. So, I've got to be careful yeah. of advising when someone's quite ill. But what I personally would do was I would look into MSM because MSM works on decalcifying the body. Um, so it breaks down calcification in the body. So I think that might be quite useful. I would also look at what her magnesium levels were and look at magnesium because magnesium and calcium work together. Um, so I would look at the magnesium in her body. Um, maybe she needs to boost her magnesium to help balance out the calcium as well. Um, but that's really, that's quite a complex um, yeah. going on with your mum is quite complex so uh, that's the kind of thing I would need to look at more in a one-to-one -one where we could get into everything that's yeah. going on because what's so important in the body to be aware of is you know we can have something presenting in one area but the root of it is so much deeper so uh, that's something that that is so important to look at you know you can say oh I've got a bad elbow but actually the root problem of the elbow could be that the hip's out of place but it's it's causing the body to go off and you're overcompensating with your elbow or we can have a pain in our heart and it's got nothing to do with our heart it's got to do with the root canal that we've got that's infected and dripping down uh, toxins into the heart area so it's always about looking underneath for me I look underneath and it's going through those layers to find out what is the underneath situation that's going on but I would 
personally, if I were you, I would look into MSM, just do some research and see what okay. you and, and maybe start on a very, very low dose of it to see how that works with her. Because obviously, if she's having allergic reactions to lots of different things, uh, there's, there's something going on in her system. Yeah, I think there is. Okay, thank you. No problem. So I'm going to have one more question, if there is one, um, before we finish. Is that it? Okay. Well, um, one of the things I want to, if anyone's interested, is I run, I do lots of different things. So I have my online courses, I do lots of free recipes and videos and talks like this um, uh, that you can get access to. I've got all my products on my website. I also run a mentorship program, which is a three month program, which starts in January. That's the group one. I also do it one to one. Um, so that is a 12 week journey through meditation, a yoga, nutrition, um, uh, really looking into the depths of all these things foraging we each week we look at a different pro plant profile and really get in depth at creating a toolkit for health and well-being so if that's something you want to know more about um, you can book a free 15 minute call with me to chat more about that the links are all on my website under mentorship so do have a look at that if that's something that excites you or interests you I do one-to-one -one consultations as well um, and I work with energy so i use my intu i use science and intuition combined because i think that's the best way to go um so and i get people to tune into their bodies and listen to what their bodies are saying so that you can start to navigate for yourself what your body wants and that's what the mentorship does is it teaches you how to really tune into your body and listen so that you don't need to turn to other people you can get that information in inside yourself so all that information is on my website which is julietbryant.com and if you have enjoyed it please do donate to the paypal i think they put the link somewhere in the chat at the beginning um, and if you if you do want to copy the links copy them before we finish so that because uh, the chat will obviously disappear when we finish the zoom um, but i'm sure the links for things will be on the facebook um thing as well so thank you all so much for having me and thank you wider horizons for having me um it's been lovely sharing with you all and i hope you've enjoyed it yes it's been fantastic it's been amazing thank you julia just what a what a whirl whirlwind <laughs> around so much amazing <laughs> Amazing information you shared with us. So important. So, so brilliant to know. Thank you. Really, thank you very much. Oh, I was going to say, really um, I have been banned on Facebook. So if you send me messages, I can't reply. So uh, do sign up to my newsletter or me, we or something else. And I'm not being rude. If you send me a message on there after this, uh, it's just that I can't reply. I can see them, but I can't reply to anyone. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Stand for sharing health and well-being. <laughs> Thank you very much, Juliet. I, I learned loads this evening. Loads and loads and loads. I've checked out your website as well. Um, Going to have a look at the different products there. Amazing. Um, just a reminder for everyone on, on the Facebook Live and in the Zoom, um, the, the donation link is wider8horizons at gmail.com. Would be much appreciated. Um, and do join us next week as well, um, Tuesday at 8 p.m. We have Sophie Docker back, and she'll be talking about um, conflict resolution and non-hierarchical um, organisation. So that's going to be an interesting one too. Yes, yes, Sophie. She's also yes, she's she's also going to be talking about otherness and the way that we have a tendency to to other people and then make them not us in order to create our our identity as me and it's a way of kind of like causing separation between people rather than trying to understand ways that actually we are um We'll try not to put down other people, but try to try to find ways to understand them. It's going to be very interesting about connecting the personal and systemic. 
So yeah, that's next week at eight. So yeah, thank you, thank you, Roberto. Thank you, Juliet. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Really lovely to to be together. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go and try and find some more. I, I actually did find some turkey tails on Sunday. They're beautiful to find. And, and birch polypore is really common, very easy to find. It grows on the silver birch. And you can find it very, very easily, that one. Uh, turkey tail a bit more, a bit, it's a bit rarer. And I'm really excited to start brewing that up and drinking it and um, and yeah I'm really interested in, in what you're talking about the which was the one sorry can I just ask which was the one for dementia lion's mane lion's mane yeah it I'm, looks like white clouds beautiful looking mm, oh that's it's right well in coffee it's tasty yeah mm. It's energizing as well. It's got a great boost to it. That's why I put it in the awaken because it's it's really energizing for the body in a gentle way. It's like whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're living. I'm living with my wife's grandma at the moment. She has dementia, so it'd be really nice to be able to, to try that. And the vitamin D is very good for dementia. Getting people on vitamin D. Um, high dosing the vitamin d and and the essential fats the other thing for dementia that's really good is saffron um uh, lots of studies have shown how beneficial saffron can be for ms parkinson's dementia um so i would i would definitely get her on the saffron oh wow okay okay great amazing amazing such such important knowledge that you've shared with us thank you julia Thank you for having me. It's lovely. It's a treat having you join us. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Mm.